At times, the sparkles were not just on Emma, but on other people and even on her surroundings. We saw the tree covered with it. All the bark was covered with gold dust. We've also seen it materialize. We were here one night when she was preparing for a mission in the Philippines, and we were packing rosaries and, and uh, scapulars in, into little bags. And as we were doing it, all of a sudden, the table was covered with gold dust. And that wasn't there when we started. It was just falling, and you could see it as it's just about to land on the table. I thought in the beginning, I thought it's a, a sweating or something. Afterwards, I realized all gold dust, sparkly. I said, I took in the camera also. So, and also afterwards, you know, it's all perfume all around here. So it was new to me, but uh, I never doubted. It's so a God can do miracles. Those who prayed with her all these years have witnessed much, much more. The one that impacted on me the most significantly was the passion and stigmata where I was here praying with her and actually saw the bruising, the bleeding, the thorns. When I first saw the, the thorn bleed, I wanted to run. I thought, I can't take this. This is, there's something here that I, I just can't get a handle on this. It's too much. But then something made me stay. For five years, I was a witness to this passion and stigmata. And uh, she started to bleed from the forehead. And my husband touched the, um, the little thorns there. There were really thorns there. A lot of blood. And uh, when she rinsed it off, the, the little holes, they close right up and the, everything disappears. She was getting, being scourged and she got up and she moved to the edge of the white thing and you could just, she was, her, her lips were going like a baby go, you know, like that. It was so painful. You could like that. It was just, you just, your heart is broken just watching it. When the scourging started, she, they would pick up the back of her like gown that she had on. It was done in a modest fashion. You could see the scourging was st started and there was just like two or three slash marks. And then in like five minutes, there'd be like maybe 22 or three, whatever. I don't, you know, it, you could see the numbers increasing and the whole, her whole back was, had the, the, the marks from the scourging. At the beginning, you could count, but later you couldn't count anymore. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. I'll never forget, too, one other thing I'll never forget is on Good Friday, uh, she was laying down, prostrate like this, as if, she, you know, uh, she went through the, the stigmata, the scourging, and, and, and it, was, it was like she, was, she went through the crucifixion. And she was laying down straight, and at the time she started to come up, I looked at my watch. And uh, the whole top of her body just elevated right up all the floor, off the floor. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fire of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning with thorns. And her hands went out, and, and she was speaking in a different language, and, and then her head fell to the side. Now and at the hour of our death, amen. <laughs> And I'm by, by background, I'm an engineer. I'm a degree it's in metallurgy, engineering. And I like my watch exactly right. And I'm, I want the time to be perfect because I, I like exact time. And I looked at the time and it was exactly 12 noon. And, and that, I got the shivers because not long before that, I was watching a documentary on television where a lot of biblical scholars believe that the time of, of Jesus when he was crucified was not three o'clock in the afternoon, but many think it was 12 noon exactly. And then they, you know, they went into why, you know, why it was that time. And that was, you know, kind of amazing, you know. We could not, we couldn't seem to take it. We understood that it wasn't only Emma, you know, and she was, but it was the Lord, actually, it was the Lord's passion.
Kingston, Ontario, Canada. A Wednesday evening, Emma started to experience excruciating pain. And the way that uh, we knew that was she was bending and moaning and going aray, aray, which we didn't know was Filipino for pain. Grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And she reached during this time into her blouse and in great pain and difficulty, she pulled out from her chest uh, roses one at a time. Tiny, tiny pink roses. There was no thorns and no leaves. You know, when we were praying, I felt, you know, I cannot, it's like I was vomiting. I, I felt that I wasn't to vomit, you know, and then I felt that something become heavy, heavy, heavy in my heart, you know. And I felt there's something here inside that's coming out. It's like there's something that is going to stick out, you know, <laughs> come, come out. And it's so painful, very painful. And it's like I want to remove it. So it's here, you know, when, when I felt the pain, you know. It was really painful that my body was like this, shaking and shaking. I jumped up to look and Emma's pulling out these small roses and the, you can see the saliva on them, like they've been through her body. Yeah, mucus, they were slivy-like, and uh, no petals, uh, just the stem. When it came out, it was coming bud first, um, and what I noticed is that the buds were very, like almost the size of your finger, and they seemed to get bigger when they came, you know, they came out bigger. In fact, some of them even kind of like opened up, but they, and they came first without the, the thorns, you would see. And then they lined them all up there. And the fragrance, the fragrance was so, so strong through the whole house, through the whole house. And I went over and I looked. And there was a, the most perfectly formed circle here in her chest. And on that circle was a tiny drop of blood and Saul said touch the touch touch this I said I can't I felt this reverence and this awe so she said we'll touch around it so I went like this around the area and it was a very soft mushy feeling almost like there was a cavern in there and uh, but the one person I do remember that touched the road in the hole touched the hole and actually put her finger in the hole was Mama. And when she took her finger out, there was like, not, not like blood, but it was like a liquidy substance that came from the hole. And when she did that, we went, oh, whoa. Then you could see the hole with the blood, the oil, you could see it close before your eyes. Uh, Jesus said to me, he cannot give me his nails, and he gave me that flower. Well, it's, a, it's love, it's a gift from God, from Jesus. And the five, the five uh, flowers that came out the last time that I had, you know, uh, for, he, for the five wounds of Jesus. I don't think that we were really understood at the time. At least I didn't understand any of what was going on. We knew that it was from God. We knew who she, that she was really from God. And, and uh, we didn't ask the questions. Whatever came, we accepted. Amazing, absolutely amazing. God's power through her. 
While the manifestations that we have already shown you may seem incredible, there is another that impresses even the most skeptical. That is what impresses the priests I talk to the most. Maybe because we, we study scripture, th that there is this light, that there is this glitter, that there is this uh, uh, whatever it is, that there are these pictures, and when they take pictures, there are these images, okay, okay. But when they see the, 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 the writing in, in, in Greek and different passages from scriptures, meaning they are not new revelations, but different, you know, of, 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 of what has already, because the, the revelation is already uh, established, that impresses many. This Filipino widow from the province of Cabanatuan, Philippines, who had difficulty in speaking, reading, and writing in English, began to receive and write messages in various languages, including Portuguese, Aramaic, and ancient Greek. And Emma was facing our Blessed Mother, still looking up, her eyes were closed, and she began to write. And she began to write very quickly. And it was all, the whole page was symbols, very neat symbols. And uh, nobody knew what it was. So uh, it almost looked like hieroglyphics or something. Well, gosh, I said, I know a gentleman who runs a restaurant here in Kingston, and he's Greek, Mike. I said, I could ask him what this is. So I unfolded the paper. And he looked at it, he was like this, and he said, this is right from the Bible. Where did you get this? And he said, this is Greek. And he said, this is a very difficult language to learn. And he said, there's hardly any universities at all that will ever teach this. And he sat down with it, and he, he was shaking his head, and he started to translate it. It was signed by Iwanis, and he said that was John, St. John, he said it would be.